wind blowing off the Northern California coast could generate climate-friendly electricity within a decade. This Tuesday, December 6th, wind energy developers will bid on a federal lease auction of a 206-square-mile area roughly 21 miles west of Eureka and roughly 275 miles north of San Francisco. This region has the best offshore wind potential really in the country. It's very complementary of solar, which we have in abundance in California, because the wind picks up, especially in the late afternoon and evening when the sun goes down, but when all of us are going into our houses and turning on our appliances and charging our cell phones and charging our electric cars. In developing the West Coast's first offshore wind farm, the auction winner could float up to 150 turbines, generating up to 1.8 gigawatts of power. California currently generates grid power using these energy sources, then distributes that electricity to cities and rural areas. Humboldt County is connected to the rest of the main grid by what I would consider capillaries. The main ones are two 115 kilovolt uh, transmission lines that run to the east and connect in the Redding or Cottonwood area. And some of the big power lines that run up and down the Central Valley, for example, would be sort of the main arteries. Those are maybe 500 kilovolts, multiple times larger than the 115 kilovolt lines that connect the Humboldt Bay region to the Central Valley. Transmission lines tend to be largest in areas where you're trying to move bulk amounts of power from generation sources to the main substations. The floating windmills will create a new generation source that was not anticipated when Humboldt County's current transmission infrastructure was built. Those lines carry small loads of power west to Humboldt's roughly 137,000 people. To deliver large volumes of power in the opposite direction from the wind farm source east to electricity customers statewide, the state or developer might build new 500 kilovolt lines. One option for transmission would be overland to the east to connect with the main transmission corridors in the Central Valley, and then from there moving to the south down to the Bay Area and other areas that have significant energy consumption. The area between Humboldt Bay and the Central Valley is rugged mountainous terrain. This is a very seismically active area. It's characterized by frequent landslides and forested area that has high wildfire. On top of that, if you're going to run a transmission line, you need a, a right of way to do that. And the existing rights of way are not wide enough in order to run the larger transmission lines that would be needed to move power. So the larger rights of way would need to be identified. Another option could be to look at an overland route that moves more to the south. So maybe following something similar to the Highway 101 corridor to get essentially down to the same location, down to the Bay Area. To sidestep the challenges posed by building lines over land, the state or winning developer could connect wind farm energy to Bay Area electricity infrastructure by burying a roughly 300-mile cable underneath the ocean floor. One is a near-to-shore route that essentially hugs the coast for a portion of the way. And there are a lot of challenges there associated with undersea canyons. You can think of it as something similar to a river valley canyon, but submerged. There are flows of water that move in and out or up and down those canyons, and often there are debris flows within them as well. So that makes them very physically challenging to install a cable uh, across them. They're also very important ecologically. There's just a lot of sea life that lives in and around those kinds of canyons. There are a number of marine protected areas along the coast between Humboldt Bay and the San Francisco Bay Area. Each one of those areas has its own set of guidelines for what is possible within them. Some of them may be very restrictive in terms of the possibility of having an undersea cable run through them. The other possibility is running an undersea cable much further from shore in deeper water, particularly it avoids the canyons. If you're going far from shore, though, you're going in very deep water, something maybe on the order of 10,000 feet. While it's possible to do undersea cables at that depth, it's really challenging to lay them and it's really challenging to maintain them. Arnie Jacobson estimates it will cost $1.7 to $3 billion to build new lines along one of the four proposed routes. In the meantime, 
the winning bidder in Tuesday's auction could build a smaller project that will not require transmission upgrades. That starter project would not export electricity out of area, but could help Humboldt County meet its goal of buying exclusively local renewable energy by 2030. Eric Black, Arcata News, Humboldt County, California.